everyone. It's Eric from the Aurora Public Library. Today we're going to talk about the basics of block printing. You'll need a few items that you can get from any online art The printing block will be of varying materials. Some people might use wood, but we're going to work with linoleum. This is normally how a linoleum block might be mounted on a piece of wood. It's perfect for working with letterpress. But what we're actually going to work with today is a much easier, uh, smoother linoleum that's e called a soft cut. Um, it's easier to cut through here and get your design on without uh, cutting yourself. You can see it's very pliable. Next, you'll need your cutting tool. A gouge like this is good because it's got multiple different blade sizes. You can get one of these at any kind of art and hobby, hobby shop. The is going to help you roll the ink out onto your block. An inking plate like this one can help roll out the ink, but really any smooth, firm surface will do, preferably uh, metal or glass. A good option is a sheet pan. Ink of varying colors. I recommend using water-soluble block printing ink because it's an easier cleanup than oil-based You'll need paper to print on, so I've cut a few squares here that we'll use. You want to have some carbon paper on hand so you can transfer your design over to the block. It's not necessary. You can also just use a pencil on the back of some, uh, your original design. Now that we have everything assembled, we're ready to begin. Okay, so I've sketched a quick little design here. It's a little spring flower. Um, we're going to transfer it to the block here with this carbon paper. And we'll just get started with a quick transfer sketch. If the linoleum is too soft to take the transfer from regular transfer paper, what you can also do is use a soft lead pencil and go over your design. gradually, and once you're done with this part of it, you will be able to flip the design over onto your block. Now, one advantage to this method is the design that you see here, oriented the way it is, will end up being the reverse on this block, which means that when we actually cut the block and end up printing it, it'll look exactly like the design you have here. That's one thing to keep in mind is your block is a mirror image of your design. Um, the end result, when you print it, is going to be flipped. So keep that in mind. Once your design is transferred, you're ready to cut. So I'm using this bench plate here, which I previously said can be used to roll out ink. It can also be used to hook over your table and makes a good safety tool for when you're cutting. You always want to cut away from your hands, and if you have them, it's a good idea to wear uh, maybe a pair of work gloves, at least on the hand that is not cutting, to save yourself from any accidental gouges if you happen to slip. Um, with this easy cut linoleum, you're less likely to slip. So we're just going to make a few small cuts just to get started. You can build a lot of atmosphere in the empty spaces around your image if you don't cut everything perfectly clear. So allowing there to be lines showing up here and using a smaller gauge can often provide a sense of dynamism, uh, sort of, uh, sort of an energy. And I like to cut around the image and get that outline done in a smaller gate gouge. Um, just to get started. Now in this case, sometimes this will get in the way, so I'll just be very careful and keeping my other hand holding the block behind where the gauge, the gauge is going, where my cuts are being made. And 
And remember, every cut you, that you make, that is white space. So keep that in mind as you're doing this. Um, all of the lines that you leave are gonna be your dark spaces when you print the item out. Okay, I'm just going to complete the outside of this with a little bit of a slightly larger gauge. Again, what I'm going for here at this point is cutting most of this, but not too much, sort of getting a pattern of what would the air be like, you know, kind of flowing through. Um, that's one of the advantages of working with block printing is that you can kind of just create a lot of patterns, intentional or unintentional um, accidents. Not always happy, but sometimes they are. One bad habit I have is that I allow the gouge to go a little too deep. Um, I really sometimes do that and then what ends up happening is you miss a cut um, because it's going underneath the surface. So we want to avoid doing that. Just gonna clean this up a little bit with a larger size. A wider gouge is also a shallower gouge, so keep that in mind as well. Um, as you cut. Okay, so we are cutting the interior of the petals at this point, and I'm using a smaller size um, gouge just to make sure I can get around these finer lines. Um, and Again, because this is a relief print, I don't really want the lines to be too fine anyway. Always cutting away from the hand that's holding the gouge. Again, this bench plate helps quite a bit in that, um, in holding on to the end of the block so I can cut away this way. Yep, 
if you aren't using a bench plate, one thing, and the reason I recommend this softer um, type of linoleum is because you want to make sure as you're turning it along the way and working that you are cutting always away from your hand. It's tempting to get into a situation where you're doing this. Um, and the reason why I wear the glove is because I catch myself doing this sometimes. And, you know, if you accidentally slip, well, you know, you can get nicked. So now we've got our cut, um, doesn't look like much just yet before it gets printed, but we're ready to roll. Now we've got everything out here. I'm going to use the brayer here to roll everything out. Just trying to get that nice tacky kind of sound here. Just so that I know there's enough ink covering the brayer. So when I roll it on, it's all going to roll reasonably evenly. And we will, so we'll roll everything onto the block. Notice that I let the colors sort of fade into each other on the brayer. So now you've got a nice turquoise moving into blue here. And we're gonna take our paper Place it right over the block here. Get our Baron. Um, this is a nice hand printing tool you can use. Again, you can always use the back of a wooden spoon as well. And I'm gonna place a little pressure Not too much pressure because we are using a soft linoleum and I don't want the ink to smear or anything like that. Once you've placed pressure evenly across the surface, you can take up two corners of your paper and slowly start to peel it back from the block. And you have your result. Good to pull a couple of these if you can, so this time around we're going to use the spoon. Just so you can see the difference. And this does not have as large a surface as the Baron does um, for burnishing, so I'm having to make these movements all across the block. It's a little more laborious and painstaking, works really well with smaller blocks, um, but it's easier to miss a few spots when you're working here. And then we will pull this one off. Each print is going to look a little different. 
Sometimes uh, you may not necessarily be happy with some of the fades, but sometimes you might actually like the variation of what you get uh, depending upon the pressure that you apply. And here I pulled six prints. Thanks for joining me today for Block Printing Basics. Keep an eye out for our other programs.